were the principal of the college, uh, Dr. S. P. Saraswat, honorable uh, speakers present over there, assistant professors from various degree colleges of uh, Jammu and Kashmir, and my colleagues speaking from abroad and from the country itself, research scholars from different institutions of the country and abroad. I, Dr. Gurpreet Kaur, Assistant Professor Chemistry, GCW Prade, welcome you again for this day two of the virtual conference on the topic, Recent Advances in Chemical Sciences. Today, we have uh, with us uh, two renowned speakers, but before that, I will I would request uh, HOD of the department, uh, that is uh, Professor Avinash Kumar Gupta for a formal welcome address. Avinash sir, over to you. <coughs> Dr. S. P. Sarswar, Principal of the College, distinguished participants, faculty members, dear students, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to one and all. As all of you know that the Department of Chemistry Government College for Women, Pred Ground Jammu, has organized a two-day international conference on recent advances in chemical sciences with the themes, topics, green chemistry, nano chemistry, catalysis, solid state chemistry, material chemistry, bioinorganic and bioorganic chemistry, etc. The objective of the conference is to keep updating the scientific community, particularly the students and the scholars. <clears throat> Yesterday we had keynote address and two plenary lectures by eminent professors followed by paper presentations in two technical sessions. So today we are in the second day of the conference. I take the opportunity to welcome all the esteemed guests, the principal of the college, Dr. S. P. Sarsal, colleagues, dear colleagues and dear students who are a part of this conference. Today we will be having three plenary lectures and two technical sessions in today's uh, in in today's proceedings, I, on behalf of Department of Chemistry, Government College for Women, Parade Ground, Jammu, extend a warm welcome to Dr. Muhammad Uzon, Associate Professor, Extra Engineering Department, Center for Nanotechnology and Biomaterials, Marmara University, Istanbul, Turkey, and Madam Bahar Asilogulu, YKK Metal and Plastic Products Industry R&D Design Center. Thank you, Dad, thank you. They will gently deliver the first plenary lecture. I also welcome Dr. Rabir Kaur, Lab Manager, Global Research Resource Recovery, Melbourne, Australia, and Professor Emikai Obuzi, Center Leader and Director, Africa Center of Excellence in Future Energies and Electrochemical Systems, and Deputy Vice Chancellor, Innovation Federal University of Technology, Nigeria, who, in spite of their busy schedule, are with us as plenary speakers of this conference. I feel honored to welcome Dr. Sushil Kumar Pandey, Professor of Chemistry, University of Jammu, and Dr. Meena Sharma, also from the uh, Professor Meena Sharma, also from the Department of Chemistry, University of Jammu, who were kind enough to accept our request to be the chairperson of today's technical session. A slight change has been made in today's program. In the morning session, there will be two plenary lectures. Then there will be two technical sessions for paper presentation by the participants. The fifth and the last plenary lecture by Dr. Obuzi will be in the afternoon session. So before I hand over the mic to Dr. Gurpreet, the organizing secretary of the conference, to carry forward the event, I once again extend a warm welcome to all the dignitaries and the participants of the conference. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Uh... Bashir ma'am, are you still in the meeting? Uh, ma'am, are you still in the meeting? We are waiting for you. Yeah. Uh, so let me introduce the speakers uh, to you. The very first speaker we have Dr. Muhammad Uzun. He is an associate professor, textile uh, engineering department, faculty of technology and biomaterials, application and research, Marmara University, Istanbul, uh, Turkey. He has obtained his PhD in technical textiles uh, from Institute for Material Research and Innovation, that is the University of Bolton. He has also received. MPhil in the field of text textile technology from Institute 
for graduate studies in pure and applied sciences marmara university he has several years of post doctoral research experience in various countries including uh, germany france uk and currently he is working as associate professor at the department of textile engine uh, textile engineering but uh, he is not able to join uh, the conference soon he'll be joining us and uh, at uh, his place uh, ms bahar osulglu will speak she is graduate she has graduated from engineering faculty uh, chemical engineering and have been working with ykk metal and plastic products industry and trade research and development center turkey ma'am over to you please share your screen bahar ma'am can you hear me her mic is mute yeah ma'am can you see my screen now yes ma'am it's visible please maximize it if you can um okay good morning again <clears throat> sorry to be being late again Uh, I am Bahar Ashiloğlu and sustainable ex I am sustainable sustainable expert at YKK Fastening Product Group. We are more in R&D product design for sustainable feature with biomaterials. Uh, as you know, clothing and fashion destroys the ecosystem and we are trying to find out solutions with sustainable biomaterials. Um, we have worked on this project as academic partnership with Marmara University and YKK Fastening Product Group. Um, if you will have any questions, you can mail me after the conference. I'll be happy to reply. Um, the plastics we know today are largely comprised of synthetic materials, but humans have been working at developing plastics since is as early as Uh, 16 before Chris. The chemical industry is the most successful and diverse sector of the manufacturing industry, which makes life easier and least by contributing to the production and development of many products. Besides plastic production, plastic engineering is an important part of the industrial sector. The leather field is dominated by engineering plastic as, be, as raw material because of its better mechanical and thermal properties than the more widely used commodity plastic. Chemical products go into textile and fashion, uh, pharmaceuticals and healthcare, agriculture and food, cosmetics, electronics, transport and aerospace. While the 19th century saw the emergence of chemistry as the central discipline uh, linking to physics, biology, medicine, materials, and biomaterials, the 20th century witnessed the rapid growth of chemical and allied industries with virtually all the strongest economies incorporating chemical manufacturing. Plastics are, as you all know, long chain high molecular weight compounds formed by a large number of identical and different atomic groups, and they have so many advantages. They can adapt to specific technical requirements easily, lighter and cheaper than compared with the conventional materials. They are durable and long lasting. They have good resistance to different types of chemicals. A thermal and electrical insulation are excellent. They are pliable and easily shaped so that they can be integrated with different materials and functions so easily. Plastic reputation fell further in the 1970s and 1980s as anxiety about waste increased. Plastic became a special target because while so many plastic products are disposable, plastic lasts forever in the environment. The widespread use of plastic causes ever growth ever growing environmental pressure and the fluctuations in oil prices. This has led to increase in environment awareness and paved the way for the development of more environmentally acceptable alternative materials such as bioplastic. Um, green chemistry is the approach in chemical sciences that efficiently uses renewable raw materials eliminating waste and avoiding to use of toxic and hazardous regions and solvents in the manufacture 
Sustainable development is now accepted by government, industry, and the public as a necessary goal for achieving the desired combination of environmental, economic, and social objectives. Green chemistry perspective requires a new approach whereby the materials and energy input a process are minimized and thus utilized at maximum efficiency. The dispersion of harmful chemicals in the environment must be minimized or preferably completely eliminated. Biopolymers have been advocated as an alternative to conventional oil-based plastic and their production has increased considerably in recent decades. Materials with functionality compare, compare, uh, comparable to conventional plastic can now be produced uh, on an industrial scale. Biopolymers differ from conventional polymers in that their feedstock is from renewable biomass rather than being oil-based. They may be natural polymers like cellulose-based or synthetic polymers made from biomass monomers or, such as polylactic acids. Bioplastics are plastics obtained from renewable biological sources such as corn, cotton, vegetable soils, plant starch, and microorganisms. Ma'am, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, we are not able to see your... This is only the first slide that we are able to see. Really? Yeah, this is the very first slide that you are sharing. You are there? Yes. Okay, okay. Please Let continue. me try... Let me yeah, try it, to... It's working now. Yes, ma'am. Is it working now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please continue. With the minimize or maximize version? Uh, it's you not maximize. Maximize. I cannot see it in my screen now. That's why I am asking. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Actually, uh, earlier it was only the very first slide that were you were sharing. It is, I think, the sixth slide that you are sharing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Please continue. <clears throat> But I need to see my screen also. I'm so sorry. Okay. Uh, the industrial revolution made our world one driven by consumerism, but things have changed drastically over recent years. Uh, the accumulation of non-biodegradable waste in the world has been increasing. Um, like in many other fields, the focus of research and development shifted towards developing eco-friendly biodegradable material. The impact of textile and fashion products on the environment is huge, and these industries are known as one of the most polluting industry in the world. You can see some scientific data about textile in this industry on the right-hand side. Another fact clearly stated in the literature is that more than half of the fast fashion products produced are disposed of in under a year. Uh, I skip the page. Can you see now? Sorry yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. It's yes. a seventh slide. Okay. The Sustainable Biomaterial Project, which I will share the technical details of the following page, has been studied in cooperation with Marmara University and the YKK Fast Tank Product Company, as I explained. Therefore, I would like to share a brief information about YKK's perspective on sustainability. Um, YKK manufactures and markets a wide range of zippers, snaps, and buttons primarily to the fast fashion industry. That's why sustainability is always our priority. Um, the YKK group in the spirit of the cycle of goodness encourages and supports the society and the all employ employees to create new values in order to realize a rich natural environment for all living things in the future. Because what we stand for is no one prospers without rendering to others. That expression covers the following in terms of sustainability. Responding to climate change, utilization of resources, sustainable use of water, 
symbiosis with nature. Um, on this page, you can see the history of YKK product produced within the scope of sustainability, like lyocell, natulon, organic cotton are some of uh, our examples. Uh, you can see some samples, some examples of sustainable slide equestrian products on this page. Leftmost product is organic cotton zipper. Trade used in this zipper is certified as global organic textile standards. It is eco-friendly in that it helps to reduce the use of synthetic chemicals in agriculture. The middle one is lyocell fiber. It's a biodegradable material made from wood pulp. Comfort extremely smooth touch, ideal for sensitive and delicate skin. It absorbs moisture and dries faster than YKK standard cotton zipper. Provides less favorable environmental for bacterial growth and existing of mites. The rightmost is natulum. It is made from recycled materials such as pet bottles using mechanical recycling technologies. Natulum product lines are designed for customers who want to increase the recycled content of their products. And here are you can here are examples of sustainable snip and button products. One of environmental friendly product biobased button is made of biobased polyethylene, produced from renewable sources, reduces greenhouse gas emissions, thus contributing to the mitigation of global warming. One of uh, other is sustainable technology in acroplating, which is trademarked by YKK. It has less environmental impacts compared to conventional plating methods. These effects were evaluated by Peterson in a life cycle assessment. Uh, finally, I will talk about the, our collections. In 2017, the first sustainable collection has been published and in uh, 2019, the content has been revised and second version was published. Third, third version also published on 2020 and it's planned to publish fourth version for this year. And now, uh, in the aforementioned project, we started to develop a product that will equalize the negative effects of recycling without the need of recycling. Button as a sustainable textile in, uh, accessory. In this study, the button product to be used as a textile accessory was tried to be produced from cellulose-based bioplastic material. Polymers abound in nature. Cellulose, the material that makes up the cell walls of plants, is a very common natural polymer. Over the last century and half, humans have learned using natural substances like cellulose. At the first step, Material selection had been done, then we, we, we uh, did some 3D design, mold design, sample production, and finally quality checks had been done. The following points were taken into consideration when selecting the biomaterial at the beginning of the study. Biological origins and bio-based carbon contents of raw materials were examined. Its sustainability for injection application and injection conditions were evaluated, of course. In addition to its chemical properties, its mechanical properties were also evaluated for functional strength, like modules of elasticity, tensile, tensile strength, flexural modules, and impact strength. Then, uh, intercolorly, some of physical properties of, were examined for raw material selection. Uh, at the end of the material selection studies, it was decided to work with the raw material, which I will mention its properties. A biodegradable polymer compound based on cellulose acetate was used at the project. Calculated bio-based con um, carbon content of the raw material is more than 60 percentage. You can see some specific properties of raw material which I share at the left hand side. Um, after the selection of raw material, the proper product type in the product range was selected and solid modeling was performed. Then after the technical drawing preparation, you see in the upper right, 
multi-coat mold design was made and mold manufacturing was carried out. The plastic shaping molds are mostly produced by using runner molding systems. The mold was designed with a multi-cavity hot runner molding system. The main advantage of a hot runner system are low labor costs due to a fast cycle time, lower energy cost and reduced production wastage. Uh, these advances show that this process also contributes to sustainability by using the different type of runner system. During sample production, conventional three-phase PP19 ton plastic horizontal injection molding ma uh, machine was used, as you see in left-hand side. Uh, I mentioned all along, with increasing global environmental awareness, the importance of producing biodegradable plastics, papers, coatings, and other consumable materials is driving manufacturers to be ahead of the curve and gain market share for the future. The raw material of the product produced for this purpose was testing according to the EN ISO 14,855 such one standard. The aim of this test is the determination of the ultimate aerobic biodegradability of plastics based on organic compounds under controlled composting conditions by measurement of the amount carbon dioxide evolved and the degree of disintegration of the plastic at the end of the test. According to requirements of this standard, the percentage biodegradation for the test material shall be at least 90% of the maximum degradation of reference substance after a plot of phase uh, has been reached for both test materials and reference substance as cellulose. Um, after doing the test of biodegradability, some strength tests were applied also because the product is a, a functional product. Uh, one of the tests was tension test. Um, you can see it the right hand side. It describes test simulation, the ability of buttons to withstand various methods of cleaning to which the garments they are attached to may be subjected to the develop samples test this test. Uh, the other text, test was impact resistance test. This test method covers the determination of impact resistance of plastic sieve-through buttons. This test method may be used to determine the ability of a button to resist breaking under impact. For example, in pressing in uh, the end item which could cause the button to fail. Individual buttons are placed on a surface centered under a tube through which a preselected mass falls from a preselected height. After the mass impacts the button, the impacted button is removed and visually examined using a five magnifying glass for breakage, cracking, or any chipping. So the result of this button for impact test is no breakage, no cracking, or no chipping. Finally, um, also we applied uh, durability wash, cadmium and lead content with the EDX machine, and we did some needle detection. Um, evaluate the durability wash is evaluate the resistance of the pro products against washing, uh, and it passed with no deformation. The remaining two tests are standards applied uh, for lead content, cadmium contents by EDX machine. The indispensable part of the garment industry is to conduct needle detection before finished garments leave the factory. So needle detection is done to check whether there are any broken needles in the accessories or garments. Uh, so we have to do this test for all of our products. Uh, it's important that there is no component in garments accessorized that will act like a broken needle and create a magnetic field. This test is applied as a standard. Of course, as expected, such a situation did not occur for these products and they passed the test. 
Um, as a result of these studies, new environmental friendly product, which made 100% cellulose based raw material, was produced. Unlike traditional plastic, is produced from petrol in independent sources. Um, the developed biomaterials based structures were found suitable for the use in textile industry. The biomaterials are successfully converted into proper textile buttons. According to the standard test results, the developed biomaterial based buttons can be used for both fast fashion products and longer usage applications. The bottom properties were not damaged after the washing and cleaning test process. Uh, the present study shows that biomaterials can be effect effectively employed to develop textile accessories, and this will lead new studies to develop eco-friendly textile materials. Uh, this is end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Uh, also, I want to add that now, um, we are selling these products to our customers as a part of our sustainable product range. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, any any question from the participants? I think no question. If you have, uh, please email me. I will be happy to reply. Okay, ma'am. You can you can please forward your mail to us so that anybody having any sort of question will be asking you personally. Thank you very much for sparing your time, ma'am. Uh, I think uh, Uzan sir is not uh, able to join. Uh, I think he cannot. Okay, thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much for sparing your time. Actually, we will, uh, we were not having any knowledge of uh, that you are uh, still there. I think there is still uh, night in the Istanbul. Yes. What time is there? Uh, could you please ask again? Sorry, I cannot hear. And what time do you have there in Istanbul? Uh, it it is quarter past eight now. Quarter past eight. Uh, okay, okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for sparing your time. Hope next time you will when whenever you will be asked to interact with us, you will spare your time. Thank you very much for being here.